Hi everyone, this is our second video for Minis Bedroom Game Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing The King's Abbey, uh, designed by Randy Raffert and the art by Anna Telenova. Hi, the video today I'm not going to show you how to play the game, I'm just going to quickly look at some of the components and describe the overall game. The game is set in 1096 AD and you're building uh, an abbey for the king, hence the name King's Abbey. Let's look at the components of King's Abbey. We have the rule book, nice big rule book, lovely quality finish of the page, nice big descriptive words. We've got a nice easy setup of the game, plenty of actual photographs of what you should be getting. Nice setup of the game, I thought overall really well designed. Well thought out book, nice easy to read, nothing too small, plenty of photographs, lovely, lovely instruction rules. There's a quick play card, gives you the basic rules of the game, how to set up a quick speed version of the game. On the back we have solo rules. Then we have another help sheet with a description of all the building cards and what they mean, so it's nice easy to work that one out, uh, with some more buildings on the back and card. Overall, the card's not too thick, not too thin. Then you've got the board itself. Nice again, nice finish to the board. Reasonable thickness overall, excellent. Then you've got the player boards. Um, quite thin, but nice finish to them. Nice art on the back. We look at the actual um, help cards that you've got. Again, same thickness as the other cards, not too thick, not too thin, nice finish to them. Cards themselves again for the buildings, apart from being really small, overall not too thick, not too thin. We look at the actual items, We've got sheep, nice and thick, and a cow. Now we'll move over to the basic game, you've got stone, wood, sand and wheat again nice thickness nice to feel and hold the coins the only negative with the coins again reasonable thickness is the fact that the five and the one look very similar if you've got a lot of them and last but not least we've got the bag uh, and or wheelbarrow if you flip them over it tells you if you've used them or not again a reasonable thickness overall the components of the game are excellent Have a look at the main board. The main board is where you would lay four resource items during the game. On the left hand side you have an event card. On each round you will then draw an event card and then use that event card immediately. You have crusade cards where you can purchase more crusade cards as you play and these enable you to get extra uh, items or equipment or bonus points. You have the buildings area where each round more buildings come out. You can purchase them for the cost Cost is in the middle section uh, underneath the name. You have a number of victory points if you complete the building. You also have to usually place a worker on the building to activate its bonus, such as if you look at the cloister, gain one defense. That only works when you've got someone on that building. And you immediately when you purchase the building, you'll get an item, such as for the cloister, you get one wheat. If we look at the resource area of the board, it plays similar to Stone Age. You have wheat, you have stone, you have wood, and you have sand. Uh, you can also change the player order with the initiative. When you place a worker on the initiative, then you will also be able to draw a tile, such as this tile here, and you immediately get a bonus. This particular bonus is a wagon, which enables you to take one extra resource when you're doing the resource phase. Let's have a quick look at some of the event cards. You can have disaster cards come out, such as this one, the drought. And this will penalise everybody. You could have a Year of Plenty card come out where everybody gets something. And the last one you could get would be the Vikings card where you have to fight the Vikings. Depending on the number of players, the number of Vikings dice are rolled. You then have to match these numbers one at a time as you go around all the players. If a player can't match, then you will be penalised uh, while the other player can as well. If the player with the most uh, assistance on the Viking will get bonus victory points as will every time you fight the Vikings.
to give you an example of the player board let's have a look at the player board this is a setup uh, for a player board on the left hand side you have some standard buildings for building your abbey there are different parts of the abbey such as the chapel the gate tower the battlement whenever you build these again you pay the cost in the middle and you then get the victory points when you place a worker on these and you also gain a permanent benefit during the game there's more building parts for the abbey than you can actually build where do these get built anywhere you get the stones so that if we place here you can build here and here there's another space on the right hand side so another space at the top and then you've got walls you can purchase walls in these dotted lines as part of the building phase where these cost five wood and you get extra defense and you get eight victory points you have your peasants or work mini workers you have dice which is your main monks workers you have your walls you, you have the money and you have your resources on your resource board as a basic game turn run step one you roll your dice step two draw an event card and then resolve the event card step three you then place your dice. You can place any number of dice you want, but very similar to viticulture, you have to do it over two rounds. The first round is doing the Abbey and Crusade dice placement, and on the fifth round, you then lay them out for the resources, which is on the main board. So, as an example, uh, for this particular roll, if I use the two and three dice, I'll place them on the main board, and I will get two peasants they start at the bottom side if I look back what else can I do I can either my crusade that I've currently purchased needs three of a kind to get four victory points if I look on my dice roll I only have two of a kind two fives or a one two and a four so I will not play in this particular case I could take the one I could place one here and then this will stay on this card until I complete the crusade another option you have is you could ask another player to assist you if they place a dice on here of a one then you have to agree on how to share that particular pool of resources so you could say i'll give you one wheat and two victory points if you can put one player on that help me complete this phase when you do go for a crusade you have to take one of your existing peasants and they have to sit in the peasant spot so it locks up a peasant the next thing you would then do is you would purchase building cards. So we would look over here and look at the building cards that you so wish to purchase. You pay the cost, obviously they go up in player order as well, and you purchase a card. They don't drop down until the end of the phase. You don't actually build the card. It will take, say, a cloister. You would put it next to your existing buildings to the left. You've just purchased it with a plan. Any buildings you don't purchase, uh, that you don't build by the end of the game, will be a negative number of victory points, whichever the numbers on the actual card itself. So you've got to be wisely purchase and build as quickly as possible. Once you've purchased your card, then you then go to the initiative phase, which is the getting the actual items over here. So we look at our remaining dice and we got a four, a five, a two and a five. So what we can do is we could take two fives. The first player to go to any spot, there is a bonus step. There are two bonus steps because of more players, but if it's a two-player game, there would be only one bonus step we'd use. Very similar to Stone Age, you can only go to one location once. So in this particular case, the value set up here, there's a five for stone, there's a two for wood. If I placed two fives, it gives me a value of ten. Divide ten by two, and that's the number of wood I would get. So in this case, I would receive five wood, which I then take immediately and I would place them on my player board. Initially at the beginning of the game, at the end of the, each round, you can only have three items of the same, although you can spend them during your rounds until you get down to that low, or you can exchange them. Once I've played my dice, the next player will then play their dice, and vice versa, going all the way around until you've used up all your dice. You can only go to, as I said, one spot once. So if you were to come over here to five, if I laid 10 in a value of dice, then I get two sand. There is one slight change in that, and that is that there are these two bonus tiles over here. 
The bag lets you add uh, one to the value of any dice. These are reusable once per turn. And once they're used, you flip them over. And the other item here that you can see is a, is a wagon. And basically, it's one-off use. If you use that, you can take one additional resource from over here. So in this case, I could take an extra wood, but I would lose my wagon. I would then have to put that back in the supply. Another action that I could play at the beginning was I could look at here and I could then play a four, five or six if I had a spare one. This would then immediately move my trainee priest up. When I get to the top, it enables me to have a bonus of a shield or resources or extra movement. That would have been uh, placed in phase three, which is the Abbey and Dice Crusade. Apologies, I missed that one. Uh, the next one would be to move uh, your peasants. So we've taken all our resources. The peasants sit on the left-hand side here. And initially, everyone gets one movement. So if I could move one along. The idea is that once you have a building, then you can then work that building. But you can only work in a building if they've got to the baptistry. So they have to move all the way across to here. And then they can jump down there. And then they're available to work in your buildings. If I got to the top of the priest level here, that changes it to a plus two. So I could then move my... Yeah, my peasants up to three squares and then as you go further along you can also move them up to three as well so those are the basic moves uh, now once we've moved our peasants we can then build so we can pay the cost of any of our buildings so we take our cloister if we have enough pay the cost of three stone i can then place it in my uh, abbey uh, until i move a fully trained baptistry peasant which I happen to have here I can then move him down and place him on the little man's spice I immediately get that bonus which is gain one defense so I could move my shield up to two this will then enable me to combat the darkness which is currently level three so at the end of the round there'll be a, a skill check if I don't have enough of that then I will lose a building or a peasant once we've done the build, we do our gardening, farming and feeding. So we would look down here and up to four peasants can be fed for the cost of one wheat. I've only got one peasant currently on my land, so I would still have to pay one wheat. Discard that. After the gardening, farming, we come back to darkness. So we then do our skill check. So in this case, if I had a three, I was covering a three. My skill check is three. Nothing happens. If I hadn't done that, then I would have been penalised. After that, we then collect income. The income is based on the number of peasants working for you. So in this case, I've got one peasant. I would pick up one coin. Once we've done that, we then do a skill check on the crusades to see if I've completed any crusades. If I've completed them, I would collect the reward and I can purchase another crusade. So we can go over here. Even if I haven't completed it, I can have two crusades running and then I will purchase for one coin a new crusade. So this particular one gets six victory points, but I have to have four of the same on this card before getting that. I would get one stone and I could move my priest on the priest training up to three spots. This would then sit if I've purchased it next to my player board until I've completed it. Once we've done all of those things, we then reset the board, pull all our dice back, uh, move any buildings down that need to be moved down from up here, pull my resources back from over this side, bring my dice back from here, reset the board and start those 12 steps again. Final conclusions and comments. The components of the game were very good. My only complaint was that the actual building cards were very, very small and it was quite difficult to see what materials were required to build of the cards themselves. Apart from that, overall the quality of the components was excellent. What else did we enjoy about the game? It was a, uh, a seamless mixture of different types of worker placement games uh, things like Euphoria using dice for workers, for viticulture where you laid, uh, like instead of doing the winter and the spring there, or summer worker placement, you had uh, phase three and phase five. Uh, you had competing against the darkness, so you always had a goal that you needed to achieve. You also had a small cooperative element. The other element was where we were trying to complete our crusades where you can help each other but you have to haggle and then take half the points potentially or some of the materials that you gained overall uh, different mechanisms but most enjoyable and obviously you had a bit of conflict with the vikings 
another uh, useful part of the game was that you could make it harder or easier uh, as you would bring in different event cards. You have that choice and there was various event cards and various buildings so you had plenty of things that you could do in the meantime. I would certainly recommend this game for anyone that likes worker placement, anyone likes dice games um, and anyone that uh, doesn't mind too much of cooperation but it's not really a screw you cooperation more of a, a helpful one uh, thank you very much from minis games uh, so we'd like to say thank you for watching our video today um, and we'll catch you soon goodbye